Hello and welcome to Philosophy Vibe, the channel where we discuss and debate different philosophical ideas. Today we're going to be looking into the philosopher Gottfried Leibniz and his best possible world argument as a solution to the problem of evil. Excellent. Now we have done a video on the problem of evil so if you are unfamiliar with this we would suggest that you watch that video first but here is a quick recap. The traditional Judeo-Christian belief in God is that God is a being that possesses omnipotence, omniscience and benevolence, meaning God is all-powerful, all-knowing and all-loving. Of course, when we see all the horrible aspects of our world, we would naturally question these attributes. Think of all the disasters that take place, all the wars and killings, diseases and plagues, all the suffering and pain we humans have to endure. Why is this the case? Surely, if God is all-knowing, he would be aware of how much evil and suffering there is on this planet. Surely, if God was all-powerful, he would be able to stop it all. And surely, if God was all-loving, he would want to put an end to human suffering. So then, why does evil still exist? Why do we have to deal with so much anguish in this world? And thus, we have the problem of evil. How can evil and an all-powerful loving God both exist? Now, this problem has always troubled theists. Leibniz, however, believed he had found the solution to this problem and introduced the best possible world argument. We are now going to look further into this and see if it does solve the problem of evil. Great, let's begin. Very well. So, using a syllogism, we can frame the best possible world argument as such. God is omnipotent, omniscient and benevolent. God could have created any universe to exist. Because God is omniscient, he would know which would be the best possible universe to create. Because God is benevolent, he would want to create the best possible world and universe. God created this existing world in this existing universe. Therefore, this is the best possible world that could exist. So, the world we have is the best possible world that God could have created. Out of all the possible worlds that God could have brought into existence, this is the best possible one. And so God is still omnipotent because an all-powerful being can only do that which is logically possible. And God is still benevolent as he still chose to create the best possible world. So, whenever we see or experience any type of suffering and question our faith, we must remember that this world is the best world that could have existed. The best world that a benevolent, omniscient, omnipotent being could have created. The best possible world that could be. If reality was any other way, it would only be worse. This theory has also been labelled as Leibnizian optimism, as it is adopting the optimistic position that we live in the greatest possible universe, and we should be happy that we have a loving God that wants us to live in the best reality and has created the best possible reality for us. Okay, I feel there are a lot of philosophical problems with this theory, and I have quite a few criticisms here. Right, well, let's hear them. Let me first start by questioning if the greatest possible world is actually logically possible. I feel like if God thinks of all the possible universes, he would never reach the greatest possible universe as this would be infinite. It is like asking what is the largest possible number. This cannot logically be achieved. So any world that can be thought of, we could just think of something to make it better and then something to make that world better and something to make that world better and so on and so on ad infinitum. Basically, I do not think it is logically possible to conceive of the greatest possible world, and so not even an omnipotent being could then create the greatest possible world. So Leibniz does actually address this point using the principle of sufficient reason. The principle of sufficient reason states that for anything that exists, there is a reason for its existence. Now, if there was no best possible world, then God would have no reason to create one world over another. What reason would there be to choose between two subpar or imperfect worlds? How would you choose which to create? So, if there was no best possible world, then no world or universe would have been created. 
But a universe has been created, which means that God must have known this was the best possible world. And so he would have had reason to create this universe and this world and this reality as we know it. Okay, so let's assume if a benevolent, omnipotent God does exist, they would want to create the best possible world. Do you really think this is the best possible world? You even said yourself, think of all the disasters there are, all the violence, the wars, think of the plagues, the famines, diseases, natural disasters. How could this possibly be the best possible world? If you step back and look at it, you can really make a pessimistic case that this is a dreadful world, maybe one of the worst possible worlds there is. I think you are misunderstanding what Leibniz means by the best possible world. It does not mean a world with no pain or suffering or evil where everyone is happy. It means just the best world that is logically and physically possible to make. Leibniz is not saying that the best possible world would have no evil. He is saying that the evil and suffering we have now is part of what the best possible world would look like. And so you may see certain horrible parts of this world, but as Leibniz says, an imperfection in the part may be required for a perfection in the whole. Imagine finding one piece of a puzzle and it looks ugly, but when you slot it in with the rest, the end result is a beautiful picture. But we are not talking about a small imperfection here. We are talking about hundreds of thousands of years of human suffering. Yes, but again, this is necessary for the best possible world. It is part of the best possible world. You can make a case that this evil is necessary in experiencing good, that pain is needed for pleasure, that disaster is needed for courage to exist, that murder is needed for free will to exist, that evil is needed for good to exist. This is all in the balance of the universe and the best possible world that God could have created. You have to remember also how much beauty and joy there is in this world, how much love and pleasure. This has all been created for us to experience too. Evil is just a necessary component of this majestic greatest possible world. Okay, let's just ask this. Could we not say that just one child less dying of starvation would make this world a bit better? Just one child less. This would not impact the grand scale of the design. It would be one less child dying and so it would result in a slightly better world. If you agree with this, then you agree this is not the best possible world. But that's the point. We cannot know if that is the case. Perhaps in another possible world, if that one child does not starve, it actually results in more evil in some way. We cannot know because we do not have infinite minds and we do not have omniscience. But God would know. If there was a better world possible, a world with less child starvation, a world with less disease, if this better world was possible, then God would have brought this about. Alas, we have the world we have, and so this and only this has to be the best possible world. I still cannot accept this. This feels like the theist is just running away from the problem of evil, simply claiming God works in mysterious ways, or telling me that I cannot understand God's reasons for the misery around me. This is not an adequate response. I feel an omnibenevolent God would be able to create a far, far better world than the one we have. I see no logical contradiction in eliminating famine and plagues and considering that a better world. I see no logical contradiction in in only creating good-natured humans that might have the option of doing evil but choose not to. If anything, when we look at how horrible this world can be, it further strengthens the argument that this is in no way the best possible world. The simplest feeble minds can conceive of a better world. If you were therefore standing by the principle of sufficient reason and accept the devastating world we live in, it would further strengthen the argument that God is not omnipotent, omniscient or benevolent, or in fact it would strengthen the atheist belief that there is no God. Hmm, interesting. If you would like the script to this video and you would like to help support the channel, then please check out the Philosophy of Religion Part 1 ebook available on Amazon. This script is also included in the Philosophy of Religion paperback anthology, also available on Amazon. All sales really help us out, and thank you to everyone who has purchased our book so far. We really appreciate it. But that's all the time we have for now. Thank you for watching. We hope you enjoyed the vibe. And what does everyone else think? Is this the best possible world? And does Leibniz's arguments solve the problem of evil? 
Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like and share. And for more philosophical debates, please subscribe to the channel. Take care and we look forward to seeing you all soon. Bye bye.